Well, that was an amazing dinner. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead, where we are learning to live traditionally in a modern world. My name is Sarah. It has been a while since I have taught you a new recipe for how to cook rabbit meat. Uh, rabbit meat is a very important source of protein for us on the homestead. We raise or hunt about 95% of all of the meat that we eat here. And uh, rabbit meat is very nutritious, it is very economical to raise, and it's something pretty easy for homesteaders to learn how to raise um, on their own. Uh, now, I'm taking this recipe, it's called Marinated Rabbit, uh, from a cookbook that I put together uh, to share with you all of our family's 25 favorite rabbit recipes. Now, if you are interested in seeing more about that um, or purchasing it, we offer it for $5 uh, on Amazon.com as well as on our Etsy shop. You can have it in an ebook or a hard copy. This marinated rabbit recipe really consists of everyday items that most everybody will have uh, in their kitchen pantry. Uh, it's very easy. I don't do a whole lot of complicated cooking here on the homestead, uh, and this is another easy one for you. Easy, but tasty. Let's get started. I've gone ahead and cut up uh, one rabbit. Uh, it's a large rabbit. This recipe calls for two rabbits, but because this is pretty large and one rabbit is generally enough meat for our family of four, uh, that's just what we're using today. I have put it already in a casserole dish that has been sprayed with oil. Uh, what we need to do first, though, is uh, create the marinade. Okay, let's get started with the marinade. Um, the ingredients we're going to be using are olive oil and some sesame oil. Uh, quite a bit of minced garlic. And now, the, all of the measurements to this recipe are located in the cookbook. Uh, I have lime juice, a combination of soy sauce and Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Put that in there. Some honey. and some pepper. Now, the recipe calls for um, salt, but because of the sodium content of the soy sauce, I'm actually um, going to wait, and if we need some, uh, some more salt at the end when we serve it, uh, then we can add it then. So I am just whisking this all up and combining everything. Uh, the um, oil should combine and emulsify with everything else and the honey in there just kind of needs to be broken up and uh, combined into the rest of that liquid. Okay, now in the cookbook it tells you that you can either marinate this in a plastic bag like a Ziploc bag or in a bowl. Uh, today for time saving purposes I am going to marinate them in the casserole dish that I'm going to cook them in. Okay. So easy as that, this is all combined. Set this aside, bring my casserole dish over, and so I am going to pour this marinade over all of the pieces, and then we're going to flip them around a couple times to make sure that they're coated. Now these pieces of rabbit meat should marinate in the refrigerator for at the very least two hours, but up to eight hours. Okay, and every uh, little bit, probably every 30 minutes for me, I'm going to take this out of the refrigerator and turn these around to coat them really well. Um, if you were going to have this marinate, you know, overnight or while you're at work, um, you know, just do the best that you can. Okay, so these are ready to go into the refrigerator and marinate. Um, I have about two hours. Um, and then we'll come back and uh, stick these in the oven, and then we'll get ready to make the sides. Well, it's almost time to bake the rabbit, and I've decided to make uh, mashed sweet potatoes, um, green beans, and beets for dinner with our rabbit, and I'm uh, getting all of those going. Well, it's almost time to bake the rabbit. 
Um, I put on the uh, on the stove some sweet potatoes. We're gonna have mashed sweet potatoes, uh, green beans, and beets with our rabbit. Now there are a couple things that I haven't told you yet about uh, the best way to prepare a rabbit. Uh, there are really three main keys uh, to cooking rabbit and have it be really moist and tender. It's been very common uh, that I've heard people's stories about cooking rabbit meat and uh, a lot of people say that rabbit meat is tough and it's dry. Um, and it can turn out that way pretty easily. But I've found three ways uh, to make amazing, moist and tender rabbit every single time. Uh, the, first, the first thing is to cover it with a sauce. Okay, as long as there's a sauce on top of it, uh, it should lock in that moisture um, and then cover it with foil. Uh, don't keep it open, cover it with foil. And then when you bake it, you need to bake it on a low temperature uh, for a longer period of time. Now the reason why rabbit meat can become tough um, and dry is because it's a super, super lean meat. It's kind of like chicken breast. And if chicken breast is cooked uh, too fast or at too high of a temperature, um, it can get really dried out. So same, same principle with rabbit meat. So cover it with a sauce, cover it in some way. I'm gonna use foil and uh, cook it on a low heat, low and slow, okay? Um, if you are interested in raising rabbit meat for your family, um, I have a really extensive um, video series on how to raise meat rabbits. And uh, you can see a link to that whole series right up here. And another thing that people have struggled with is how to cut up that rabbit. I also have a video about that and it's broken down into steps that are very manageable. I uh, go ahead and check that video out here. So it's just about time for me to put the rabbit meat in. I'm gonna grab it out of the refrigerator. We'll take a look at it and uh, get it into the oven. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. Pulled it out of the refrigerator and I have flipped this. I'll be honest with you, I only flipped it once in the last two hours that it's been in there, but it looks pretty good. I'm gonna flip it one more time before we put it in the oven. Oopie. Okay, so we need to cover it with some foil. That will help lock in all of that moisture and keep everything nice and humid in there. Cover it tightly. And then we're gonna put it into the oven on a low heat. And then we'll come back and uh, finish up the rest of our side. Well, it's all finished and it looks fantastic. Now, when you are bringing the rabbit out of the oven, you need to check its temperature and make sure that it's fully done. Um, and you want it to be about 160 to 165 degrees. So I'm gonna get started serving. Um, I always like to serve Kevin's plate first and I will, I'll give him a nice leg. I'm gonna flip this so that it gets some more of those nice, a nice sauce. Put that on his plate. That's a back leg and then I'll do the same thing with the front leg for him. There we go. And moving on to some sweet potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes. And we also have some green beans. These are canned green beans and some beets. Both Kevin and I will have both of these. Kids aren't so fond of beets. There we go. Now, the best part about this meal is that we raised that rabbit, we grew those green beans, we grew those sweet potatoes, and we grew those beets. That is exactly why we are here. That is what we are meant to do and uh, we love being able to do this almost on a daily basis makes everything worth it all the hard work all the blood sweat and tears it's worth it we encourage you to do the same so you guys i really appreciate you guys stopping by the homestead before you go uh, don't forget to subscribe comment and share and until next time you guys thanks so much for stopping by the homestead take care and god bless